Hi, I'm Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving, and today I wanted to uh, demonstrate warping my Bergman loom. Um, the Bergman loom is rather unique in that it is a loom that is able to fold um, a full-size floor loom. Uh, and a lot of looms that fold, uh, they have a scissor action that kind of fold up like this and um, they're a little bit portable, but uh, nothing like I have experienced with the Bergman. Um, the Bergman loom was developed in the 30s uh, by Margaret Bergman and patented. And uh, they made looms up until, oh, I believe the 70s. And they're located here in Paulsbo, Washington. Um, they're went out of business in, in the seventies and, but they're Bergman, but the looms still, um, persist today. And I was lucky enough to find one recently and purchase it. So, um, they're a joy to work on. So I wanted to show you a little bit about, uh, the kind of what they, what they can do. So, um, since they are kind of a unique, uh, counter march loom, um, they are, have a little, they're a little quirky. Um, so I thought it would be fun to demonstrate warping, warping my Bergman loom. So I'll show you a little bit about, uh, my space and why this loom is so great. So let me pull you off the tripod here so I can give you a tour. So this is my space. Let's see. All right. So I'm going to back up here to the doorway. Um, this is my space. It's about nine by 11. Um, I share it with <laughs> all my stuff. There you can get a better, better idea. Um, and the cat. Uh, I have some shelving over here. Um, I also work from home, so I have to have a printer um, and just various odd bits and pieces. But this is why we're here. Uh, this is a Bergman Countermarch loom. I believe it is from hmm, probably the 50s, maybe as early as the 40s. Um, but the unique part about it is it folds. So let's see if I can get over here. So the loom is a 56 inches wide weaving width. And uh, when it is fully extended and in use, um, it's, I believe it's 40 some inches deep. And the uh, folded like it is right now, it is about 21 inches deep. So you can see that it gives me a lot more room when I'm not using it, which isn't very often nowadays. Um, but it gives me a lot of room uh, to do other things in this space. Um, so uh, I will put you back up on the tripod and um, I will unfold it because we're going to warp it today. Okay, so uh, first off, we're going to get the bench out of the way. Um, this is not a bench that came, originally came with the Bergman looms, um, but it is quite old and it's comfortable. My husband's kind of modified it a little bit. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, pull it out and extend the back wings. Do this kind of gently. pull this around so that you can hopefully see. Okay, so these two back wings extend out. Okay, I changed you so you have a little bit better angle. Um, so uh, so the back wings extend out. There we go. The uh, 
the back beam comes up. There's got pegs on it there, so it comes out of those pegs there, fits into pegs there. And then you have two pins that go in like that. Easy peasy. Um, then this comes down and over the back beam and that will be pulled in um, when I get ready to put the actual work on. So let's the treadle side up so it's a little bit tricky scooting it around so I have these clamps on here this is actually the bottom uh, treadle beam and um, It, you'll see in a second where it actually um, comes down and sits on the floor and then the treadle pedals are, the treadle pedals, the treadles are uh, underneath. But with it up, they do, and if it's all tied up, they do tend to um, lever themselves, lever that beam off. So I just have them clamped down a little bit. Okay. So now these two rings come out. Get that out of the way. And then we can take the clamp off. These will come down. Now, the breast beam is stored up here. This comes down and goes in the two dovetails uh, right there. So there it is, all extended again. So I'll push it into place. As you can see, once it is all extended and in use, it takes up a fair bit of room in here. So, all right. So now she's ready to uh, warp up. So in order to make it easier to, actually I need to turn the light on. There, that's better. Uh, in order to make it a little bit easier to warp, um, one of the first things that you do is you put the breast beam up here and get it out of the way. Uh, then what you do is take the beater bar off and you set it down in between there. Um, that will give me uh, access to um, pre-slay the reed. Uh, the project I'm doing are huck lace napkins um, using 10-2 cotton in a uh, 24 ends per inch set. So this is a um, 10 dent reed, so we're going to take that off. And 
I don't use a rattle. Um, and the Bergman looms uh, work best slaying or uh, warping front back. My previous jack looms, I always warped back to front because it had a sectional beam. So this has been a little bit getting used to for me. Um, I'm going to uh, use my reed as a rattle. And I have put a six dent reed in here and I will slay um, four ends per dent uh, in a six dent reed. And that will give me, that'll spread it out to um, the 24 inches. And then once I beam the warp, thread the heddles, I will put my 12 dent reed on and uh, slay two per, two ends per dent. So, let me go ahead and get my um, warp and uh, I'll be back. Okay, so I've got my measured warp laid out here and I'm just going to insert my least sticks um, and my cross. I do not take off any of the clips holding my cross until I have everything in place and the lease sticks secured to each other. Do not want to lose my cross. That's the worst thing to happen. Okay, um, so I have these handy little, they're actually binder ring clips that you can buy at the, I think I got these at the office supply place. Um, anyways, the, these sticks have little holes in the end, so, um, for this step, I just use these little clips and it secures them together and lets them have a little bit of space in between. They can wiggle around, but they're not going to separate. They're not going to fall out and I can um, work with it. So the next step is to uh, tie the least sticks and just kind of hammock them uh, in between the two wings so that I can pre-slay the reed um, sitting here comfortably. So um, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so um, this is all pre-slayed. And now I will need to um, beam it onto the warping. Okay, so here is one of the cool things about the uh, particular loom that I have. Let's see if I can get this off of here. So, with this loom, um, here is the breast beam that will move back down here at one point. Um, however, this jack box um, can be lowered down to this point to get your harnesses out of the way so that you can beam directly um, through without having to move your heddles around and try and figure out 
how to get through there. Um, so unfortunately it is a little heavy and so I need to enlist some assistance to uh, get it down. Um, okay, so um, I changed the camera angle. I took the um, strings down that were holding the leaf stick up. So we're going to go ahead and take the breast beam off and set it aside for the moment. And make sure that the cloth beam is down in its lower position. I'm going to secure the harnesses together so that they don't go all cattywampus. These don't need to be terribly tight, just enough to keep everything where it belongs. Okay, now we are ready to pull it down. Okay. 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 Careful. Does it go here? No, it goes straight down. Oh. It goes in this one right here. So now we have a straight shot through to the um, other side of the loom. Hey, welcome back weavers. So today we're going to be uh, beaming the warp and then threading the heddles and the reed and hopefully start weaving. Alright. So pull these out. Just kind of give them a little tug to tighten things up, straighten things out. So, because I beam by myself, uh, 
I tend to use um, some weights to uh, create the tension that I need. So um, I take a couple of the two of the bouts, pull it out a little bit, and you can't see what I'm doing down here, uh, but I'm just going to basically create an overhand knot with the two bouts, make a big loop, I'm going to put my hand weight through there and tighten it up a bit, and that will create enough tension. Do that with this one too. Don't get the extra strings tied in there. Everything is good there. You can slide the beater bar forward, pull these through, and then put clips on these sections so that it doesn't slip off. So now I need to um, get rid of my beater bar. So in order to do that, um, I've just got these looped over the wings. So I can pull those off and lift my beater bar out of the way. tight in here. Okay. So now um, the leaf sticks can suspend from these hooks up here. Um, and I'm just going to Roughly put them up here to get them out of the way. They're still uh, tied together so that they can't uh, come out of my cross. And now I need to lift my jack box back up to uh, this area where it belongs.
and that is the reason you tie up these uh, harnesses, tie them all together, because it can get a little challenging to manage everything. So now I just need to um, count out my heddles on each shaft and uh, start threading them. <laughs> 